was about to make a video detailing about the censorship of Tokyo Mirage Sessions FE, a crossover between Fire Emblem and Shin Megami Tensei. There are tons and tons of things that are being censored, I'm sorry, localized, because of a few certain things here and there. I'm gonna give that video in detail, but I have something that absolutely bothered me in terms of localization, and yes, believe it or not, my existence here on the internet is not just to give in and deliver news, commentaries and opinions, all of that. Other than that, I'm also here to learn, because people have different viewpoints and takes on different things, and I think it's a great way for us to learn about them. I'm an opinionated guy, but my opinions can be wrong, which is why you always have the opportunity to tell me how I'm wrong instead of tell me how I'm misogynist. This is an opportunity in which you guys can share your opinions on this matter, so let's just give into the argument on what I want to ask on this video. And before you watch this video, I recommend you guys to check out Bryhart's video about why localization matters, just so that you can get to the overall context. If you're too lazy, well, let me sum it up. He basically argues that because certain people have different values and cultures and beliefs, some games need to be localized to fit in with their values of a certain culture. And that's fine. I understand we have values that are different towards each other. However, the problem is that he's focusing on the general context of localization. I would love for him to go for specific examples because if he talks about the general thing, it makes it sound like he's trying to justify the genuinely bad localization. Don't think of localization as a single product. Think of it as a category or a genre. You cannot always judge something based on their category, the same way you cannot judge people based on their race or gender. Localization isn't always bad. Hell, localizing something on a particular media can be a great way to shift a really boring story to a really good one. Take for example Oran High School Host Club, Monster, Cowboy Bebop, Ergo Proxy, and a more extreme example, Ghost Stories. These are all stories that in my opinion are better told in the English dub, more so than the Japanese dub. And in the extreme case of Ghost Stories, the dub actually makes it will be one of my favorite animes ever. But here's why those examples are great. They not only give proper localization towards the work, but also greatly enhances them for the story context in some ways a bit too much. Here's one example of why, in my opinion, the English Oran High School host club is a million times better. There's a scene where Haruhi and Hikaru are trapped in a net and she has to cut off the net with sewing tools. In the Japanese dub, Haruhi sounds more innocent. <laughs> In the English dub, she's a lot more cynical. What are you doing? Grow up. This is the only way I can reach where I need to cut. I know it's awkward, but it'll only take a minute. No, it's all right. Take your time. <laughs> This is how localization can change a particular character's personality into someone else radically different. Ghost stories, again, have the most extreme example of this. Dad, can you go bomb an abortion clinic or something? You just wait. When that wonderful president finishes stacking the Supreme Court, we won't have to. It is one creepy looking tunnel. Kind of reminds me of your sister for some reason. I think she's right. You are retarded. Years ago, people went in there, but they didn't come out. Not unlike your sister. I know what you're thinking. Why aren't I pack a Danny or some stone dreadlock Jamaican while well, you're all being racists, but women should never be allowed to drive. Now you might argue that Japanese to English is just mere translation, but as someone who has learned basic Japanese in high school and can speak fluently on two language, no. They're not. The context of Japanese language is pretty hard to translate to English, the same way translate to English in Indonesia is also pretty hard. While I love the raid and the raid 2 for the action, the translation from the English script to Indonesia is pretty garbage. It doesn't feel natural, it feels like it came off from an English script, but uh, well, they did their best. Now since we're focusing on specific examples of good localization, I can give you the impression that localization in general is good, even though localization, like I said, is a category, and a few products do not reflect the category as a whole. This is why if we're going to discuss localization, we should keep our focus on specific examples. Fire Emblem Fates is a bad one, because it removed so much of the game's original context, adding in completely unnecessary bullcrap, and replaced it with some really bad writing. The removal of the petting minigame is just a cherry on top of the crap cake. Now, Localization happens because of different cultures, values, and beliefs of one's country and to the other. Please visit this page on TV Tropes called Value Dissonance. This page has compiled a huge number of things that the Japanese culture has that are wildly different to the Western culture. It has compiled tons and tons of examples ranging from general to very specific. Now, reading through all of that might give you the overall impression that localization is probably necessary, but therein lies the problem, and there's something that I find conflicting and of how I should approach it. So you have tons and tons of games being unfairly localized to fit into the Western culture, and this 
is where politics came in. Correct me if I'm wrong at this, but the Western countries in general has countless and countless of times encouraged multiculturalism and diversity, diversity of cultures, values, and beliefs. So you can practice your own cultures and beliefs in there however you want, and we're going to be very tolerant about it because we want to promote diversity and tolerance. And that's good. As an Indonesian with Bineka Tunggal Ika, aka United in Diversity, as my national slogan, I cannot agree more. So here's a game representing the cultural values and beliefs of the Japanese people. Let's make sure that it doesn't feel Japanese anymore. So I'm a little conflicted when something like this happened. Sweden bans dead or alive dimension because of false accusations of child porn. It's not. It's fictional characters for God's sake, and I've talked about this in my Attack on Lolis video. At the same time, Sweden also has an open border policy to the Middle Easterns and making itself to be the country with the highest rape per capita, 77% of which are done by foreigners, and most of them came from the Middle East. If you thought that was extreme, critiques of Islam, once again, critiques, will get you convicted. How would a culture that creates nothing but heavily traumatized teenagers and nothing but absolute hell towards women is a fine culture to not be regulated when a culture being delivered in completely harmless and innocuous fiction is something that should be regulated? I understand the argument of different cultures and beliefs. I understand that we perceive a lot of things different to others. I understand that we should localize things for those simple reason. But if you're going to tell me that some really bad localizations are made thanks to differences of cultures and ideas, keep in mind that the West, or at least the mainstream press promotes diversity and tolerance and multiculturalism. In reality, they promote tolerance to the Middle Eastern culture and not to the Japanese culture. Why is that? I understand that not all culture is healthy to a civilized modern society, but Japanese culture is doing just fine. The Middle Eastern culture is still full of war and terrorism. Why regulate a generally civil culture and not regulate a culture that has been proven time and time again to be barbaric and uncivilized? The reason why I protest censorship, other than to prevent a world where the concept of dirty jokes doesn't exist, is because it creates fear towards the international developers. It creates the fear that Japanese developers wouldn't be able to import their games to the West because people are going to censor them anyway, and it's going to be based on cultural differences even though that's always not really the case. The practice of censorship has been nothing but fear-mongering towards the Japanese developers who has an artistic vision to be delivered to their games. They have those artistic vision blocked out by certain people who find their views offensive and don't represent the opinions of the consumers as a whole. This is why Dead or Alive Extreme 3 wasn't released in the West, but Play Asia has the balls the size of freaking Jupiter and is willing to import those games to the West despite all of the backlash that they got. Play Asia's pro-consumer attitude is being handsomely rewarded. I got a video covering that one too, and a reason why you should tell these special snowflakes to just go screw themselves. We're living in a year where people constantly beg for diversity of race and gender and culture in video games, movies, etc. But when confronted with actual diversity of a culture they don't like, they decided that it's best to regulate it. If you're going straight to my face that people regulate Japanese games because differences of culture, please tell me your opinion about the completely uncensored, unstable, unhinged, unmoderated, and unregulated Middle Eastern culture. Next week, we're going to talk about the censorship of Tokyo Rod Sessions FE, so stay tuned, dear viewers. That's all for the video today. If you like this, you can go ahead and click the like button and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.